Um, the first source that says there, the contextualization says, on October the 23rd, uh, 1962, the US imposes an arms blockade on Cuba on finding a uh, offensive missile sites, Kennedy ready for a Soviet showdown. And that comes from the New York, New York Times. Now guys, you can learn so much from contextualization. The contextualization is the top piece of the source. That top piece tells you exactly when it was written and who wrote it. So the first thing that we need to understand is that this comes from the New York Times. Okay, it comes from the New York Times. In other words, it is a American newspaper. Okay, now the minute that it's an American newspaper, you know that it's going to be biased. Okay, it's going to make their country seem the best. It's going to make their president seem the best. It's going to try and get support for their country. Okay, remember guys, bias, reliability, usefulness, validity, those are all things that you get from contextualization at the top of the source. Okay, now this source is all about the blockade. Remember, what was the blockade? The blockade was the, um, the ships that were placed around Cuba. Okay, because Cuba's got nuclear weapons, so we're going to place these ships around Cuba. Okay, so let's quickly read the source. Um, Washington, October 22, President Kennedy, Kennedy opposed naval and air blockade tonight on an offensive military equipment to Cuba. In a speech of extraordinary gravity, he told the American people that the Soviet Union, contrary to promises, was building offensive missiles and bomber bases in Cuba. In other words, we know they have um, missiles. He said the bases could handle missiles carrying nuclear wars up to 2,000 miles. Okay? That's a critical moment in the Cold War was at hand tonight. The president had decided on a direct confrontation with and challenge to the power of the Soviet Union. Two aspects of his speech were notable. One was the direct push at the Soviet Union as the party responsible for the crisis. In other words, this is directly at the Soviet Union. President Kennedy treated Cuba and the government of Premier Fidel Castro as a puppet in Moscow's hands and drew the issue as one with the Soviet government. The president made it clear that the country would not stop short of military action to end what he called clandestine, reckless, and provocative threat to world peace. He called on Premier Khrushchev to withdraw the missiles from Cuba and so moves the world back from the depths of destruction. In other words, this is now laying out to, um, to Russia that we are taking this direct stance with you. We're going to put this blockade around Cuba. If you're not going to remove your missiles, if you're going to try and put more missiles in the country, we will place, we will directly get in your face. Okay, that's basically what is being said. Okay, so that source is all about the blockade. Okay, this source is all about brinkmanship. We're on the brink of aggression. We're on the brink of getting into each other's faces. We're on the brink of putting a nuclear warheads against each other. Okay, so now we get to your source pack. And you'll see one of the, the first question that is asked in your source pack, um, why did the editor of the New York Times choose to publish this particular article? In other words, why do you think the New York Times wanted to publish this article? Okay, I'm going to tell you the answer. I would obviously wait for a couple of hands to go up now, but I don't have them. Um, you can see here, yeah, I've said here, yeah, to gain support for the president, okay, to let the people of America know what is going on, okay, and then I've said here, yeah, you must remember it is an American newspaper, so it will be biased, okay, and it paints the American pre um, president in a favorable light, okay. Then if we go back to our source, um, the question is, how does the headline in the New York Times portray Kennedy. And guys, the headline there, with, you can see with my cursor, it says, Kennedy ready for a Soviet showdown. Kennedy ready for a Soviet showdown. What does the word showdown mean? It means, it means we're gonna get into each other's faces. In other words, I'm waiting for you to do something, and then I'm going to react. So how do you think Kennedy is portrayed here? Okay, Kennedy ready for a Soviet showdown, okay? In other words, 
this is what it says. It, speak of, it speaks of Kennedy being ready for a Soviet showdown. In other words, Kennedy is portrayed as not backing down, ready to stand his ground, almost heroic. Okay, but it's painting him in a very favorable light. Okay, comments on how Kennedy dealt with the crisis in Cuba. In other words, how did he deal with those nuclear warheads being positioned in Cuba? Okay, we know how did he deal with it. He dealt with it in a blockade. Okay, it says it in that source. He imposes a blockade, okay, to stop ships um, coming in and out of the country, okay. It is, n it is not an aggressive attack in that he bombs Cuba or the Soviets. He waits for Russia to react, but he is taking a stand. That is tucking, but taking a stand. He is definitely taking a stand and saying, I'm ready for you. If your ships come to me, we are going to take them out, okay. And then grade 12s. In every single marking guideline, you will always have any reasonable response over here. Any reasonable response. Okay? Any reasonable response means that if you can argue your standpoint and it is a reasonable argument, then the marker will give you the marks. Okay? Right. The next um, question. Explain why you think Cuba has become a mere pawn in Cold War conflict between the superpowers. Okay, so great 12s, what does the word pawn mean? Okay, the word pawn means that you are being used. You're like a puppet, okay? So why do you think Cuba has become this puppet in Cold War? Okay, and obviously we know um, that the fight was actually much bigger than Cuba. The fight was a Cold War fight. So in other words, it, lots of other fights were going around at the same time. And the big thing was that America was trying to stop the spread of communism, okay? And, this, um, and Russia was trying to Im implement communism. So Cuba became this perfect spot for Russia, okay? This perfect spot for Russia to um, implement communism there and get it America, okay? And so they were used within the Cold War period, okay? Um, so I've said, yeah... One must remember that this was in the middle of Cold War, okay, and that America was trying to stop the spread of communism um, that was raging through Europe. It can be argued that Russia would see Cuba as the perfect area to aggravate America, as Cuba is on the American doorstep. Um, it can also be argued as a proxy war, in that America and Russia can, cannot take each other on, as they both have nuclear war, so those two super powers fight ideology in other countries. Remember, Vietnam, Korea, um, all, all of those are also proxy wars in the Cold War. Okay, proxy means it's a Cold War fight, but it's taking place somewhere else, okay? And then lastly, I've spoken about this already. Um, to what extent do you think the newspaper is biased? Okay, like I said to you, it is an American newspaper. It comes from an American perspective. Therefore, it will paint America in a positive light and it will paint Russia and communism in a negative light. Okay, but remember once again, let's just go back. Whenever you look for reliability, whenever you look for um, bias, whenever you look for... Um, um, validity or anything like that, it will always be at the top here into, in the contextualization, okay? So who wrote it? And the minute you can see that, for example, if it comes from an American point of view, it's going to paint America in a good light, okay? Right, now, um, Matrix, there's quite a bit I still want to do with you. Um, I'm going to look at the last source very quickly, and then I want to go and look at China, because China, once again, is a new focus. And I just want to explain to you guys that China, um, what was going on in China, just so that you guys have a good understanding of that. Right, so the last source that we look at um, is, you can see there, Khrushchev, he's always, always the, bo the board guy, okay? And Kennedy are sitting with a wrestling, um, arm wrestling, okay? And they're both sitting on nuclear warheads, okay? And um, you'll see that their fingers are both on a buzzer, and those buzzers are connected to the nuclear warheads. So in other words, they're trying to wrestle which country is the best, okay? Or which country deals with the situation the best. And obviously you can see that both of them have nuclear warheads, so in other words, they can take each other out, okay? 
Um, this cartoon, drawn on the 20th of October 1962, shows Khrushchev and Kennedy involved in a game of arm wrestling. It was over the deployment of missiles in Cuba. Now, one of those, uh, one of the questions that I saw in one of the study guides with this with this cartoon was, whose whose opinion do you think it's from? Okay, um, there's various um, answers to this. My matrix said to me when I did this cartoon with them in class that it seems to them that Khrushchev is taking a lot of strain because if you look at the if you look at the cartoon, you'll see there's a lot of sweat around his head. Okay, so he seems to be taking the most strain there. Whereas um, Kennedy looks to have only one little sweet bead over here. Okay, so we go to the questions in your book. What message does the cartoon convey? Okay, what message does it convey? Okay, what is the message of it? Obviously, that they're, you can say anything that they're on, they're in a period of brinkmanship, they're competing with each other um, to see um, um, who's going to be more aggressive, anything like that. Okay? At the state of brinkmanship, it shows that America and Russia are competing to win in Cuba. Okay, they're arm wrestling to win. Comment on whether the cartoonist gives an accurate portrayal of the events. If you look at it, do you think it's an accurate portrayal? Do you think it shows brinkmanship really well? Do you think it shows, I mean, they're both sitting on nuclear warheads. Do you think it shows the competition that Khrushchev and Kennedy are having? Um, do you think it does that very well? Um, my answer here yeah, would be it's an accurate portrayal. It shows the tension that existed in Cuba. Um, it shows how evenly matched Russia and America were in Cuba. It portrays how the superpowers were readying themselves for nuclear war. They were both sitting on warheads. In other words, it accurately portrays the period of brinkmanship. And then lastly, um, both Khrushchev and Kennedy have their fingers ready to press a button. What do you think would happen if these buttons were pressed? Obviously, a nuclear war or World War III. Okay. So, grade 12s, I hope I've answered some of your questions on Cuba. Um, um, I need you, I hope that, that I've actually um, enthused you about the subject and maybe you can go back to your teachers and ask them some more about brinkmanship and nuclear war, et cetera, et cetera. I see one of my questions here is um, what is the Cold War, okay? Um, the Cold War, remember, I said to you over here, the Cold War is, it's between America and Russia, okay? The Cold War is between America and Russia. It's a fight between ideology, so it's between communism and capitalism. And capitalism, okay? It's a fight between communism and capitalism. And remember, they can't use no weapons can be used, okay? No weapons can be used against each other because they both have nuclear warheads, okay? Okay, and then, the how, so how do they fight? They, they fight with propaganda. Remember what is propaganda? Propaganda is painting yourself in a really good light and trying to sway the public to believe something, okay? Um, and then lastly, um, they fight in other countries. They fight in proxy wars. What is proxy war? It means in another country. They, f they fight in proxy wars in other countries. And obviously, we know that Cuba is a proxy war. Okay. Right, um, so that's Cuba. I'm going to go into China now um, just because um, we have to move. I could spend a lot more time on Cuba showing you some other um, cartoons and stuff, but I need to move now to make sure that you guys understand Cuba.